this topic, this field, I don't need to explain the importance to, to this audience. You more than anybody know it. But in a way, uh, I was very, very struck last week by uh, one particular event, which brought it all, all home for me. And it was World Bipolar Day. And uh, I think all of us in our families, in our workplaces, in our friendship groups, our community groups, uh, in our own lives, experience mental health uh, on a daily basis. And uh, for me, as just you know, a classic dumb Australian male who bottled up our family's story for 25 years, 25 years until uh, I was asked a very well-framed question on Q&A one day. See, some good things come out of Q&A. Uh, I, I had not talked about my, my mother's challenge. And then, uh, because of that, having talked about it, uh, this, the sector came to me, and then I came to the sector, and then when I took on this role, we deliberately, consciously, utterly you know, established mental health as one of the four pillars of the long-term national health plan for the first time. But World Bipolar Day really brought it back to me because this was mum's condition. And we had the good days and the bad days. And, uh, you know, the, the dark days we all know and the highs uh, were, were very, very high. And uh, as I said on World Bipolar Day when somebody asked me about what it meant for our family, it meant that one day I looked on the front of the, you know, as a teenager, what was then the Melbourne Herald, uh, and there was my mother walking across hot coals on the on the uh, on the front page, uh, and then the uh, following day we were tending to the feet and the downs as a result of that. And so it was just you know, this is the life that we all lead across the four million Australians every year, and the more than forty percent of Australians over the course of their lifetime who face anxiety or depression, uh, bipolar, schizophrenia, eating disorders suicidality or tragically uh, suicide. And we also know, and I think we have, have to be absolutely uh, clear about this, that in the last year uh, for which we have coronial figures, uh, we saw a bounce back in uh, suicide numbers across Australia. We had made very significant progress in 2016 and then a bounce back. In particular, and this is an area of great concern, uh, in uh, adult women, not of retiree age, so between 18 and 60, in Queensland. And uh, we don't have a, a proof of why yet, because it's very hard to correlate for all individuals, but we do believe that there is likely to have been a drought impact as part of that. But uh, that's, a, that's a subject for more research. But anyway, so whilst we have lots of progress, we know the challenge, but then we see uh, sometimes there are steps back. So, therefore, our fundamental national challenge is, I think, across two fronts. Uh, firstly, uh, to make sure that what we are doing is to normalise the discussion of mental health and we move from hiding to destigmatisation. and so many people in this room and so many people around the country have played an important role in that. But destigmatisation is where any of us can talk about somebody else's problem. Normalisation is where we talk about our own health and we do that uh, in a very, very open way. And uh, to be able to feel free to do that, I think, is extremely important. That is what we have to achieve as a country. Progress, but that's an eternal continuing work uh, to keep going forward. The second. Uh, of the great challenges then is in terms of services and to make sure that we are expanding those services out. And that's at school level, uh, youth and young adult level, uh, right through uh, the middle ages, uh, and then at seniors level. And uh, across that front, uh, turning to services, this year we'll spend approximately $4.7 billion of Commonwealth funding on on mental health, and that's across uh, Medicare, uh, the pharmaceutical benefits, direct programs, Indigenous health, support in hospitals, and, and research. But it's not that money that matters. Uh, what matters is the question of are we uh, helping to prevent, and are we helping to treat, and are we helping people on the path to recovery? 
That's, that's the only test that really matters. So in terms of our recent investments, um, the critical things that we've done is we've tried to look across all of these fronts. An expansion uh, of care for our, uh, for our young people at school uh, with the BU uh, program, uh, coordinated by Beyond Blue and, and others, but it brings everything together, a nearly $100 million uh, investment in uh, school age, mental health, so as people can have their own sense of self, uh, teachers know what the resources are, this has already been rolled out, uh, and that we are making that difference to, uh, to young people across the country. Uh, similarly, when you look at the young adult uh, level, uh, in particular, what we have done there is to ensure that we've had an expansion of the Headspace services, but with a series of other programs that I'm currently working on, I'm very confident will be uh, rolled out within the coming months. And so we know that uh, one in four young people in any year face the challenge of mental health. And you know, as, we, as the father of a, a young girl just entering her teenage years, I'm just acutely aware of the extra pressures and the extra challenges uh, and to see them in friendship groups uh, and through schools. So that, pro that series of expansions in relation to early psychosis, headspace, uh, and the uh, additional support uh, within schools and out of schools is, is what we're doing there. Then uh, the next of the areas is in terms of right across the ages. One of the critical things in terms of suicidality uh, and uh, suicide prevention is that we know that the single group uh, in our society that is most likely uh, to complete suicide is those that have attempted or be, uh, been admitted to hospital and released from hospital for suicidality within the six months afterwards. That is the vulnerable group. Now, there are many, many vulnerable groups, but that's a, irrespective of what their demographic is, irrespective of what their age is, that's off the basis of an individualised diagnosis and, and treatment. And yet we haven't done enough uh, historically to deal with that. So the uh, funding of uh, $37 million uh, for the Way Back program uh, across 25 PHNs initially is an absolutely critical step forward. And this, I think, will be one of the most important things we do. My hope is that this program is matched by the states and expanded across the country uh, and becomes uh, just an absolute standard of care that every single person who is discharged from hospital uh, having been admitted for suicidality, uh, suicidal uh, behaviour or a, uh, attempted suicide will be part of uh, the way back or a similar program where they are individually tracked and supported. The grand transformation that we have to have is to be able to work towards a one-stop shop approach. We have a Peter McCallum, uh, we have a Chris O'Brien Lighthouse, we have the world's best care in oncology and cancer. Uh, we have amazing care in mental health, but people in those middle years don't know, uh, other than their GP, where to go. And the GP is the first place. But we need to do more to have this one-stop shop approach. And Frank uh, uh, and Jennifer and Mental Health Australia have been huge advocates on that behalf. So that's now my next vision that I want to achieve in terms of systemic change, that concept of the, uh, the obvious entry point for people beyond the youth years, beyond the... Uh, the, the headspace years. So in the same way that you have a VCCC or a Peter Mac or a Chris O'Brien or uh, a Kinghorn Centre, that we're able to start to do that both for in, uh, in, in clinic uh, and outpatient uh, approaches and I, uh, with a series of satellites. That's, I think, an extreme... Th that's the, the new vision uh, that has come from the sector. I wish I could say that was my idea, but it's not. Uh, and then... With our seniors, we know that it's, just, it's so obvious that with the combination of physical decay, of neurological uh, challenges, and then of course facing end of life, um, there can be very high rates of 
uh, depression, anxiety, and other mental health conditions, which is why we recently added $100 million uh, to the work of uh, uh, protecting our seniors against uh, mental health challenges, $80 million for in nursing homes, and our mental health nurses are a huge part of that, uh, and then uh, $20 million in particular for uh, going forwards uh, for uh, what we are doing um, in the community with mental health nurses for seniors. So that, that's a summary of where we're at at this point in time. But going forwards, what are the big things that we're doing? What's the Productivity Commission review about? The Productivity Commission review uh, is, one is to make sure that we're able to better utilise all the resources that we've got to try to ensure that there's not duplication, but to expand, not contract resources, to expand, not contract. But in particular, to use one resource which is wildly underutilised, and Jennifer and I have talked about this a lot, which is the workplace. Um, so many of us spend so much of our time within that environment. And this is the opportunity for the workplace to be a point of support, uh, of first recognition, and of recovery and rehabilitation. And uh, we want to work with the top 200 companies in Australia, as well as all of the small business organisations, to use the Productivity Commission as a foundation for that. Secondly, uh, there is the research in, re you know, in the forward agenda. Beyond the Productivity Commission, there's the research work in mental health. And for the first time, uh, a 10-year, $125 million integrated mental health plan, which is putting mental health research at the centre of our national medical research program, um, is, is there. So the Million Minds Mental Health Mission um, is being developed with the sector, but it's locked in over the course of a decade, and that funding is there. Critical to that is a focus of the early priorities which have been agreed upon include indigenous, youth and eating disorders, those three areas uh, as the, uh, the areas that we'll embark upon. But at the end of the day, the goal is to see a million extra people have improved treatment over the course of the next decade. And then uh, thirdly, there's a particular personal passion, uh, eating disorders. Uh, we've commissioned the MBS task force to uh, do the work on that, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to their response to me, uh, but we're, we will be implementing their recommendations. And uh, I've been fortunate to win the support of uh, the Prime Minister and the Treasurer and the Finance Minister on that, and eating disorders, which are a notoriously difficult and challenging and agonising condition. Uh, deserve additional support and we'll be providing that support. Don't worry, that's just calling the, the house to order. Uh, and so that's our short summary of where we're going in the, uh, in the coming, uh, coming months as we uh, take steps forward towards the election. Uh, but we have a mid-year economic budget, we uh, have a budget and we have an election, all you know, three items coming together. And so that's how we take the Productivity Commission work, we take the work of the Million Minds, and then we take the additional support for eating disorders and other elements uh, that are coming together. So the past and the present and the future are all integrated. I want to thank you for what you're doing. We wouldn't have any of these programs without your insight, your guidance, your support. Uh, you know, I'm slightly fearful of Frank, uh, his advocacy is, uh, is you know, passionate and uh, he just never, ever stops. So I want to thank and acknowledge that work. I'm delighted to be able to announce um, that we will extend Mental Health Australia's uh, support under the uh, Health Peak and Advisory Bodies. That's uh, 550 core, 350 additional, 900 a year. Uh, three years, $2.7 million, and guarantee that all of the other supplementary funding uh, outside of uh, the Health Peak Advisory bo uh, Bodies funding will also be extended over that three-year period. So uh, that's an acknowledgement of your important work. I thank you, and I'd be delighted to take any questions.